I'm in Brooklyn, birthplace of the greatest science communicator to have ever lived. But he wasn't just a science popularizer, he was a scientist in his own right, pioneering planetary research on Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Jupiter's moon Europa, and Saturn's moon Titan. Of course, I'm referring to Carl Sagan. Let me tell you about his work. Carl Sagan was born into a Jewish immigrant family in 1934, so much of his early work predates modern astronomical observations that resulted from the space age. Instead, they relied on Earth-based telescopic observations. For example, in 1960, Sagan published an influential work where he suggested the previously observed extreme temperature of Venus, about 900 degrees Fahrenheit, was caused by an extreme greenhouse effect. Based on the spectral evidence available at the time, he concluded that it must be water vapor that was responsible for the greenhouse effect. But it was only after we had better data did we conclude it was actually the result of an extremely thick CO2 atmosphere. Less than a decade later, Sagan and collaborator James Pollock provided the first argument that seasonal changes in the appearance of Mars could be adequately explained by merely physical processes and did not require a biological presence. See, in prior years, it had been observed that areas of Mars seemed to get darker in Martian springtime. It was inferred that this was caused by seasonal growth patterns of life on Mars, in much the same way it happens on Earth. But Sagan and Pollock performed an analysis on the possibility of wind-blown dust being the explanation, and concluded that yes, given observational data available at the time, this adequately explains the observations, no life needed. Then, in 1976, Sagan and Selpeter produced a speculative work about the possibility of life in the atmosphere of Jupiter. Unlike prior works by others, and Sagan himself, this was the first of its kind to rigorously examine the ecological consequences of the atmospheric layers of Jupiter, concluding that three possible kinds of life forms could exist there. Sinkers, which are small autotrophic organisms that fall through the atmosphere, floaters, which as the name implies are balloon-like floating organisms, and predators that move around eating the former. Of course, there's more I could say, but I'll leave reading his other works as an exercise for the listener. Sagan's legacy lives on as the quintessential science communicator, but we shouldn't forget the actual scientist, too.